Fascinating to see, it will. and again, we should see it in the next couple well, of days. We hope so. We hope so. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Um, and now to a man who has discovered the joys of watching wildlife, but on an absolutely miniature scale. Watch this and be inspired. It's good. I'm Patrick Roper. I can see things that perhaps other people can't see. Wildlife's always been a hobby of mine since I was a very small child. The square meter project was something that really started by accident. I mapped out a little square in the garden here, one square meter, and I started to look at it every day and to see what exactly the wildlife of a square metre was. I soon realised there was a great deal more there than I had at first thought. This is the actual square metre here, from that corner along to this post, then up there, and then it goes back to the big stick across there. It took me over. The metre wouldn't let me go. It grabbed me and said, you're staying here, young man. <laughs> A lot of people, I suppose, would think, well, is this gardening? It's not gardening in the sense that I don't attract anything into the area and I don't put anything in the area apart from myself. Everything that arrives there arrives entirely of its own accord. I divided the square into two and uh, the front half is, is uh, run like a pasture. In other words, I graze it and the back two bits are run like meadows. There's something very satisfying about this grazing process. I can understand why cows like it. <laughs> My family uh, think that I'm a bit eccentric. Oh, I can't imagine why, really. The children often come down and have a look uh, and watch me turning over the stones and logs and that sort of thing. I normally come down every day. Uh, I get sort of withdrawal symptoms if I don't come down, if I'm away or something. I've actually... Um, done it in my imagination when I've been somewhere else, you know, I've made an imaginary visit. When I'm sitting down at the square, it, it kind of takes you over and I go in almost into a trance. You become familiar with very small things, with wood lice, with, with grasshoppers, with ants, with spiders, and this little miniature world. There are an astonishing number of things colonizing, living in these things, all milling about together. It's wonderful. One year there was a grasshopper in the square. I saw it every day. Um, and I could see it looking at me, too, and, and you, you can help getting the sensation that this grasshopper knew me. One of the magical things I saw it do once it bit off a grass blade, it held it up like a sword swallower, and it ate it downwards like that, so it all disappeared into its mouth, you know. And then here I've got this little pond, and things do fall in, so I get quite a lot of fauna. There's something there, look. See a spider that's fallen in? and looks very much drowned at the moment. But uh, surprisingly, they, they often do recover if you let them dry out. Perhaps the most exciting thing are the wolf spiders. Uh, they're like the sort of lions on the savanna, you know. They, they go about chasing insects. And they can see you, too. It's not only the common species that are found there, there are quite a number of rare species. Um, for example, there's a nationally scarce uh, beetle called um, Ly Longitarsus lycopi, rather a long name for a very small creature. Um, but that hasn't been recorded from Sussex before. Um, it's actually quite common in my square metre. You realise in, in some almost mystical sense you're actually part of it. You're, you're one of the little creatures <laughs> uh, that's with them. You get a, a kick out of it, a bit of a high if you like. You can sit there probably for hours. I mean, I have to go indoors and eat my supper or something boring like that. But you can sit there and sit there and sit there. And it gets better and better and better. And you see more and more things. You'll probably find a shriveled figure of myself sitting there one day. And somebody say, oh my God, what happened to him? <laughs> he got stuck looking at the meter. 
I'm not doing it for the sake of science. This is not a scientific project where I'm going to write a paper and all the rest of it. I, I would say it's more art than science. I haven't had anybody yet saying, well, I'm doing one too. I do like to think of people in distant lands um, doing a square in their garden or maybe somebody living in the middle of a city. We could all get together in a sort of metre square club, couldn't we? And you could do it in other parts of the world, so uh, have a global network of square metres. I think that's a brilliant idea. It is, like, don't, uh, don't let Simon see it. You know, be, oh, we've got a bird list for my metre square or something. Next, you know. yeah, we've got more than you. It's, and what I love about that one, Kate, is it's, it's sort of a new way of looking at wildlife. And yeah. there always are new ways. And you think everything's been done, but it certainly hasn't. And that's what it's about. It's, it's, it's making yourself aware and focusing. And if you want to find out anything whatsoever, and there has to be a plug coming up. And indeed...